Hi folks, my name is Kyle Blankenship. I'm the Copper's Cove editor with the Clean Daily Herald newspaper. Today I'm going to be interviewing Kirby Lack, who is running for the Place 5 Council seat for the Copper's Cove City Council. What is your professional and or government history, and how does that experience make you uniquely qualified to be a council member again? All right. Um, ran for city council back in 1992, and I was on council for a six-year period, where it came out to be 98 or something. Uh, served as uh, on place four. I was uh, mayor pro tem, I believe, once for a year. And uh, other than that, it's uh, uh, the political thing has just been kind of dormant, I suppose, until about three years ago. City Council, Coppers Cove, uh, overspent by four and a half million dollars. And I and I found out some other things I didn't like. Uh, they had shut down swimming pools, baseball parks, and man, that's crazy. Uh, so I decided to run again. Mm -hmm. And so I've been on council since 94, this council since uh, November of 94, I think. And uh, I'm acting mayor pro tem now. Uh, at least till November anyways. Mm -hmm. um, um, what are the top three issues as a council member that you've identified in Cove ongoing and how will you address those issues as a council member over the next three years? I think the parks and recreation is one of the big things. Um, as I was saying, the I found out that they had shut down because of the misappropriation of some money. Uh, they were trying to build a 1.3 or 1.2 million dollar building and they were shutting down our baseball fields. We have tax-paying citizens that were having to come to clean Harker Heights to play softball, mm -hmm. soccer, or anything else because uh, they wouldn't let them on the fields. The fields were in disrepair. So uh, one of the big things for me is to get the parks up. And the foundation of every good city, whether it be big or small, is your city parks, your parks and recreation, I should say. They shut down swimming pools. They shut down baseball fields. and. Um, I had to do a little squawking and, and squealing, I guess, over about a year and a half period. But um, now we've got like four and a half million dollars been uh, appropriated for parks and recreation. We're redoing our swimming pools. We're redoing all of the ball fields. We've got five of nine ball fields up and looking real good now. Uh, putting new lighting, new fencing. Uh, we're doing some jogging tracks. Um, matter of fact, we have 5,800 uh, uh, foot of uh, jogging tracks coming in. We're doing some some uh, upgrades on our golf course, just getting started on that part. Um, bringing in some more business, changing our EDC from a 4A to a at least a 4B, maybe an MDD, and uh, just so people will know, I guess, uh, the a 4A EDC is what we are, and they can only do like eight things. Mm -hmm. That's all they can do. They can only bring in industry. They can't really uh, bring in, help mom and pop type things. A 4B can do like 12 or 15 things above and beyond the same things that a 4A can do, but they can do a lot more. An MDD can do even more than both of those put together, and an MDD gives you so much flexibility um, and you can do so much more. So I think it's really important that we look that direction, at least a 4B or an MDD. And can you tell the viewers what an MDD is? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's a multi uh, multiple development district and uh, it's the same thing as an EDC there be no tax hikes there uh, it's the same amount of money the half cent sales tax they've been collecting for like 20 something years now since uh, about 91 or 92 uh, so it, it won't change anything it'll just change the only thing that will actually change will be the flexibility of what we can do with the money uh, we can we can put in civic centers we can put build baseball uh, parks uh, um, dog, what do we call those? Dog parks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can do so much more with it, and we can bring in other businesses. A uh, prime example is we have a brand new uh, Sutherland's, uh, I forget, home decor or something. I, I forget the exact name, but uh, you can Google it. They're coming to Cove, they're taking in the uh, old HEB building. Well, see, our 4A EDC couldn't help them because they're an existing company trying to come in. Mm -hmm. They're not really classified industry, so they couldn't get any money from EDC. They could help them with a few small things, but other than that. So the council took that, our city manager actually took it, and uh, ran with it. And we've got them coming in now, and we've got uh, three or four other businesses. We've got a big rig place coming in where they'll be teaching um, truck driving school is actually what it is. 
Uh, we've got a concrete place wanting to come in. We've got uh, several other businesses. We've got a McAllister's. Uh, we finally get a restaurant in Copper's Cove. Uh, we've got a McAllister's. We've got a Ross's coming. We've got uh, seven or eight different businesses that are coming in within this next year, 2017. They should be opening up. Uh, so that's really where our uh, uh, we're we're kind of aiming, I suppose. Uh, the state has told us that uh, somewhere within the next five to seven years, they're going to turn Highway 190 into an interstate, and uh, when they do, it's going to go around Cove. So we have to prepare and get ready for that. Uh, businesses, of course, will follow the interstate out there, and that's that's excellent. More business, uh, but we have to prepare the down the downtown part. Uh, and so we want to we want to spruce it up, and we've got a, a development plan for uh, all of the business 190 district to plant trees and grass, you know, soften it up and make it a lot prettier, similar to what Colleen did to Avenue D down here. Uh, so that's uh, those are some things that we're that we're looking forward in the future. Speaking of business, the city of Cove has had recent issues identifying new streams of revenue and expanding new business in the city. You touched upon that a little bit, but what should the city do to boost tax revenue and to court more business in Cove? Well, there's not a great deal that we can do to, uh, we're not going to raise taxes. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and listen, three, three and a half years ago, I made mention of the, uh, the, the, the residing city council, I suppose. Uh, they got us in trouble, about four and a half million dollars. And this council, two years ago, we drew a line on the board, so we're not spending over this and uh, our budget. What we actually, uh, what they did was projected that four and a half million dollars, and then they tried to spend it and got them in trouble. And so for the last two years, we brought in a balanced budget, so we don't have to raise taxes. This year, we kept our taxes, last year and this year, we kept our taxes exactly the same, so we're not going down, we're not going up, and we actually have a surplus. So we paid off the four and a half million dollars, we paid back into the uh, our rainy day fund that we had to use up. So all of that is stable and secure now. So uh, the city's in better uh, as far as tax revenue. Uh, we're looking at the uh, leaving our taxes the same because of businesses that are coming in now and because of some other things that have happened. Uh, we're looking at an increase of about, or surplus, of about $258,000 coming in this year that did not come in last year just through tax revenue. And that's not raising the taxes. Um, so that, that's just going to be an awesome boost to us. I mean, that's a quarter of a million dollars we get to get to use on, on projects and what have you. Now, another thing we did is, um, boy, it's been a real touchy thing in Cove. When we brought in um, the new HEB, the council and EDC back then gave them a 360, a 25-year tax abatement. It was outrageous and still is in my mind. Well, we've been uh, negotiating with Endeavor and... Uh, Endeavor is coming in. They're opening up uh, a second plat for our, our new uh, shopping mall. And I think they already have like seven businesses committed to come in. But because of, of this, we were able to renegotiate just recently, mostly our city manager. I, uh, that girl knows what she's doing. And uh, with our uh, finance directors and our budget directors and whatever, uh, they were able to renegotiate a deal with Endeavor so that they don't get that 25-year abatement like they were getting. They're having to finally give some of that back to us now. Uh, so we renegotiated that deal, and that's big. And so with that and with Sutherland's and some of the other things that are, that are uh, coming, we've got a, um, it, it's not, I forget the name of it, Pets R Us or something like that. Uh, so we've got a couple of new things coming in, and, and that's going to bring in some, some tax abatement. Uh, and... We've got new stuff coming. We've got some good, exciting things happening in Cove. And a lot of it is going to happen like next year, within the next year. Um, uh, some of it two years. But um, it's it's an exciting thing. And I, I love it. I'm, I'm just proud to be a part of it. A local option election will take place November 8th, during which Cove voters will vote on a proposition legalizing the sale of distilled spirits and mixed beverage in Cove city limits. Do you support the passage of the proposition or oppose it, and why? Uh, actually, I'm for it. Uh, I'm probably going to catch some flack for this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm for it, and I'll vote for it. Um, there, there's been, you know, I don't like anything that's misleading. And, and the... Um, I'm glad it's on the ballot. I, I think it's time that we do this. We need the tax money. And we've got citizens right now that are driving to clean land passes, wherever they have to go to get it. 
uh, to get alcohol. And the bad part is they drink, sometimes they drink it and then drive home. And for me, uh, man, that's just, that's just bad. And if they can come here locally, they won't be able to go in and drink it. They'll have to buy it at a package store of some sort and then take it home. Well, I'm, if that's what they want to do, I'm okay with it. I don't drink, but if they want to, you know, that should be their option. And it'll be a good tax revenue. A lot of people are saying that if we legalize alcohol, we'll get in the big restaurants. That's not true. Uh, we, have, we have talked to restaurant after restaurant, and they're not coming because uh, they don't believe that Cove is big enough to support that kind of business, you know, on, on a regular basis. You can't have 500 people show up for an opening and then have 100 people a week after that. There, there's got to be a steady flow of traffic. So that's the real reason that they're not coming in. But we have right now, uh, gosh, I, I think just one subdivision alone uh, out around the um, uh, Lutheran Church Road, out 1, FM 116, we've got like 1,700 houses coming up just there. Uh, we've got another corporation that's building, I believe it's 300 houses that'll be like uh, $270,000 homes and up, up on top of the mountain, about 300 houses there. I, I think that's the correct number. And so we've got like right at 2,000 new homes coming up and uh, getting the home builders and getting the, uh, getting the residents, that's the key to getting in the bigger and the better restaurants. But it's coming. I do believe it's coming. Cove is known as a veteran-friendly city, mainly due to the city's ongoing relationship with Fort Hood. In light of issues nationally and providing adequate resources and support for veterans, how would you like to see the city improve its relationship with veterans in Cove? I think we have a really good relationship. We have, uh, we're sponsoring, uh, we're, as a city, we can't really sponsor a group like that, but we have Star Veterans, and uh, we right now we lease them our old police building and uh, the and, and what for a dollar a year and uh, they just absolutely uh, I mean they they literally minister to thousands of uh, vets and, and that kind of uh, military and veterans and so we're kind of supporting them there now we are getting out of the rental business uh, as a city I don't think a city should be in the rental business at all and as such as with the Cove House in Coppers Cove there are five buildings dedicated for vets or, or anybody else that is homeless and, and whatever and they go to and they get free treatment and they, uh, that kind of thing. But the city, again, it was a dollar a year and we're having to carry all the insurance and, and what have you for these things. And uh, so we reviewed that just this year, just about three months ago, we voted, we just donated those, those buildings uh, to the Cove House so that they could continue their work in the city staying out of that part of it. Um, but uh, we, support, uh, we support the veterans all that we possibly can. And I'm sure the good relations will continue. We're, uh, uh, we're still members of the HADA, and uh, actually I think they're coming in here pretty quick to, to give us a rundown of, of what's going on. I've got Colonel Fox coming October 13th for our Rotary Club, actually, uh, to uh, give us an update. And so we have a pretty good relationship. And our city manager is uh, pretty tight with... Uh, uh, with Fort Hood, and she's on several of the boards and, and committees, and she meets with them. Uh, I don't know about weekly, but you know, quite often at least.